Now, the storm may have passed, but America's financial sector continues to face headwinds. Public anger remains over big bonuses being paid out by these banks. And now, the American government is considering a tax to pay for the losses due to TARP. How are banks reacting to this proposal, especially those that have already returned the TARP money? CNBC's David Faber spoke with J.P. Morgan Chase chairman and CEO Jamie Dimon after his testimony at the Financial Services Commission and began by asking Dimon what he made of the commission's agenda. Remember, the commission has been set up to inquire into the causes for the credit crisis and the great recession of last year. I think it was completely uh, appropriate and I think they have a very important job to do, which is dig into what happened, look at all the facts, all the information, do real diagnosis and try to help you know, make the American uh, system work better. And to those who would say after they conclude that, of course, so many are already giving their prescriptions, that size is one component of the key problems that we've faced. Uh, I know in your testimony you disagree with that. Why is the size of a financial institution not perhaps indicative of a systemic problem and therefore something that should be uh, ameliorated? Well, first of all, you had a lot of failures, okay, and they were large companies and small companies and mortgage banks and thrifts and insurance companies, and it wasn't size alone. And, you know, when you look at just size as an economic thing, there's a reason for large companies. You know, we have in America some of the best companies in the world. They do business around the world. They invest in massive size, you know, to build airplanes and computers and and uh, pharmaceuticals, and we just simply follow them around the world. You can't do what we need to do for a lot of these clients and governments and institutions, mm -hmm. even like lending to the state of California. You can't lend $2 billion if you're a community bank. There's a role for small companies and a role for large companies. It's not size alone which is an evil. But it, uh, a company like yours, which is systemically of great importance, that also takes consumer deposits that have insurance from the federal government, why should it be able, for example, to leverage bets in the derivatives market, a very risky place, with that government-insured money? Right. So I think you've raised a very important point. We have been firm, we believe, and I think almost everyone there has said it, that no firm should be too big to fail. But in the new world, the regulators need more authorities to deal with failure. So that we think had they had the right authorities, they could have dealt with Lehman in a better way, AIG in a better way. The American public doesn't care if we fail. What they care about is if we fail and it hurts them. And we think if you had the right uh, regulatory uh, scheme in place, enhanced resolution authority, that that could actually be done where it doesn't hurt the taxpayer, it doesn't hurt the economy, it just hurts the people it should hurt, us, our shareholders, and our management. Now, the American people right now are also potentially angry because they watch banks like your own uh, and people at a, ver at a number of the banks seemingly making good amounts of money only one year past a crisis in which they feel uh, that they ultimately helped save these companies. Uh, you've said in your testimony, your written testimony, you think compensation at your firm is appropriate. Why? Well, you know, first of all, we have 220,000 people. I mean, I think it surprises people. 19,000 are programmers and network engineers. We've got uh, internal security, real estate facility. We've got data, 89 data centers around the world. So when you talk about compensation, we're we, we try to pay everyone fairly. So we look at every person and we try to have deal with them properly. We also have some high-paid rainmakers and producers who... we got a lot of high-paid people. we got high-paid traders. you got some high-paid investment bankers. La uh, you know. Last year, we paid over a million dollars to like 1,100 people, or maybe, maybe possibly more. Okay, we have 223,000 people, and, you know, we have a lot of successful people. We have a lot of complex businesses, and, you know, comp was way down last year, and we haven't done it yet this year, so uh, wait and see before you criticize it. <laughs> and is that a message you'd send to the American people, wait and see before they criticize no. it? No, I th we have to, again, you have to understand, company, people who did badly should pay for what they did. Not everyone did badly. Not everyone's the same. I think it's a mistake to treat Every single institution is the same. One of the uh, commissioners pointed out today that he would really like to hear from all the companies that failed, that some of the companies you're talking to are the ones who've survived, and I think that's a good thing for America. I do understand the anger. You know, we have seen a lot of comp people make a lot of money and leave and take their, after the fact the companies went down the tube and hurt the American economy. Well, that makes me angry, too. Punish those people. Right. Well, what about the asymmetry? And this was one of the final questions brought up about compensation. You seem to say there is something there that is yeah. still in effect to a certain extent that should be addressed. Look, I think there's always, in some businesses, not just in ours, sometimes asymmetry. You can make a lot, but you can't lose a lot. The way we ameliorate that is if, if you work for us, the more senior you get, the more stock you own, the more you look at the big picture, we risk adjust everything. Uh, we don't have change of control, the severance packages, all those things that people can walk out and still keep a lot of money. And we've added all these clawbacks. I should point out, our senior management team, last year we had 100% clawback, meaning 
that with my recommendation and board approval, the people report to me, we could take back 100% of their unvested stuff. And we did for almost no reason at all. Now, of course, you can't treat people like that totally, but right. but it was a pretty much percent, hundred percent clawback. So you'll see more of those things. You, well, we start to see some clawbacks. You do. I mean, the question was asked, we, but not answered. We have done a few. Yes, you have done a few. Yeah. Um, the Obama tax. Uh, I asked Mr. Moynihan. Uh, we're going to potentially hear more about it tomorrow. But on the face of what we know at this point, do you believe that to be appropriate? I think that using the tax system to try to punish people is inappropriate. But I don't think it's. Uh, but I don't think it's inappropriate. I want to be very clear: is that if you have a resolution mechanism that is that, like the FDIC has today, that the industry pay for it. So I think it's perfectly reasonable the industry pay to take care of itself. I don't know how the auto companies deal f fell into that, but I think that concept is a decent concept. I'm not sure it should be within the tax structure. But there should potentially then be some sort of a fee here in terms of at least. Like, like the FDIC does with deposit premiums right. today. So if you said there's a right way to handle it, you know, TARP helped a lot of people, it helped the system. Yeah, we don't mind that somehow that uh, the industry helps pay for having right it itself. Uh, and finally, I know you're going to report earnings in a couple and of I days. And yeah. we paid billions of dollars of FDIC premiums. Okay, TARP costs money. So it isn't like there's no charges here. We lost a lot of money to the auto companies. And we don't. We understand, but let's let's be. But I think to the extent reasonable. that they can, that that money will go, and you know, the capital becomes more dear for you, and therefore you don't take as much risk as you might otherwise. That also lends, plays itself into it. Might be appropriate. No, no, I think that's that's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Finally, uh, reporting earnings in a couple of days, so I know you can't talk specifics. But what's your take right now in terms of generally in the economy? You know, I'll be looking closely at home equity loans from you guys. You do a good job of breaking it out. Credit cards. Have we seen a top in delinquencies? Do you expect delinquencies defaults in those asset classes to? Okay, I'm, I, you know, as you know, it is we're sure. releasing earnings on Friday, so I can't say that. As of November 30th, okay, the good news has been that delin it seems that delinquencies. Uh, of course, almost all consumer products have leveled off. That's a very good thing. And you see the same signs I see. There are signs of kind of growth out there. I've got this abiding faith in the American spirit, work ethic, entrepreneurialism, and innovation. We, it will come back. We just, you know, I just don't know exactly when, but it will come back. And finally, this question was asked a lot. Had there been no TARP, had there been no government assistance at all, um, it was asked to Mr. Blankfein numerous times, would we have a financial system to speak about right now? Well, yeah, I, I think the answer is yes. I think that, again, you know, it's very simple. In our world, we make everything binary. And I think it's a mistake. It's not a binary. There are people who would not have survived with it. There are people who might not have survived with it. There are people who didn't need it at all. We did not need TARP at all. I'm not going to say... You didn't need say, TARP, but if everybody else well, had if, gotten if, it... Well, if the world had a depression... If AIG had been allowed if, to go down... If AIG, it would not have cost us directly a lot of money, okay? We, we think the losses have been well less than a billion dollars and. And so I guess, but 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 we deeply appreciate what what the government did to to fix the financial system, the economy. If the economy got much worse, yeah, of course it would hurt us, okay. But would it put us in the bankruptcy? Well, it would have to get a lot worse to do that. During this whole time period, our capital is going up. We were earning money. We had positive. We, had, we were at a we point where there were deposit, potentially we, runs on the we, bank. I mean, we, no, but we had a flight to quality. Our deposits were going mm -hmm. up so much, so fast. We didn't know what to do with the money. Okay, but I don't want to act like I'm not appreciative of all the things the government did to save the system. And so, you know, most a lot of people participated in TARP and some of these other programs because they wanted to help. It wasn't about profit. It wasn't about your company. It was about helping your country. And we're going to continue to do that. As you know, we've been at the forefront of uh, HAMP. We've been at the forefront of almost everything that we can do. California needed money. We lent when Illinois needed money. We lent in terms of foreclosure we started, mitigation. We I just know. started a whole new small business program. We're going to do everything we can. Well, your balance sheet's still coming down in terms of assets, and your lending standards are still tougher, and your leverage ratios are coming down. So you do everything you can, but you're going to be pressured to do a lot more that you can't. We're, we're under a lot of pressure to do a lot of things, but we are still lending two billion dollars a day to, to a lot of customers, and credit standards are really not getting tighter anymore.